One of the biggest matchups on this year's schoolboy football calendar, perennial title challengers that share the same parish boundaries will stand eye to eye for one more time. The mad Cubans believe they were made for titles, but their opponents insist that the town be painted in red, color red. Garvey Maceo, Glenmuir High, it's the Clarendon Derby, live on your home of champions. Hello, my name is Kimani O'Sullivan. We're still here at the Glenmuir High School for some scintillating schoolboy football action. We just witnessed Kemp's Hill. They toppled Veer Technical two goals to nil. The first time in nine tries. And Veer Technical, they go home with nothing. But Kemp's Hill, they take all the spoils. And now it's over to the big one. Clarendon, you're going to have to stand up for this one. The stands are filled to see Garvey Maceo take on local rivals, Glenmuir High, and we have a front row seat. Donald Oliver, the Jay Williams, they're still upstairs. Over to them. Yeah, we're looking forward to this one. Glenmuir against Gav Maceo. It's uh, usually been a close contest between these two, the Jay Williams. Yeah, and that's exactly what I'm expecting again, both of these teams, as Kimani so rightfully mentioned are you can really say it now, powerhouses of the Clarendon Da Costa Cup scene, powerhouses of the Costa Cup generally. And as you can see, Zone I, the fixtures in this one, we just saw Kem Sill beating Veer Technical, Foca Rodale play Porus, Glenmuir facing Garvey Maceo, and this is a really big one. Really, really big one. Both of these teams semi finalists in last season's Da Costa Cup. Glenmuir leading the group so far. Some really impressive victories. 5 0 versus Kemsil and then 13 0 in their next game, plus 18 goal difference. Garvey Maceo, two wins as well, but not by such wide margins. But they'll definitely be expecting or trying to give up an upset in this game. For my money, Donald, I think this is probably the highest profile game in the first round of schoolboy football if we're just looking at the quality of the teams in recent history. Glenmere, of course, Champions Cup winners beating Clarendon College last season. Didn't beat them in the Dacosta Cup final, however. They'll be looking to right that wrong and if we're going off recent history, when they set out to right wrongs, they usually get that job done. Garvey Maceo, recent champions in their own right, 2021. They know what it takes to win. Glenmuir are looking to get there. And I really can't wait for this fixture, Donald. No, it is expected to be a classic one. And Garvey Maceo and uh, Glenmuir High, they have so much to prove against the other. Glenmuir in a lot of people's books considered to be real heavy favorites. Based on their results last year, based on the fact that they went to a couple of finals as well. And they have back so many of your players from last season the government say they continue to build they were beaten by the eventual champions in the semis government say right here at glenmuir high but again they'd want to go a step further this time around and it's a very tough group Not often you see the top two of the top four competing in the preliminary round, but such is the strength of the parish of Clarendon in particular, where these things happen.
just waiting for the officials to make their way towards the players. But uh, based on the names that we see here, as uh, these teams get ready to square off, not only do we expect a, a tactical battle, but but really different types of expressions of the beautiful game here at the home of Glenmuir. Yeah, most definitely. I think Glenmuir have grown in reputation to be one of the most tactically astute teams in schoolboy football. Coached by Andrew Peart, of course, head of coaching education for the JFF. So that's something that you would expect. Referees are or it looks like they're ready now. There's a couple of formalities with the match ball and I think we'll be underway and yes, we're underway. The pre-match festivities have started. So two of Clarendon's best come out to the middle to start a unique battle in the preliminary round. They are expected to easily be the top two in this group and advance and go further into the competition, but they can do some damage to pride, to confidence this afternoon. We now pause for the playing of the national anthem. Ramar Francis is the man in the middle for this massive game. Andre Smith, Sunday Edwards, Christopher Mason assisting him. It's time to take a look at the starting lineup for Glenmuir High, Justin Murray between the sticks, Numani Blackwood, Conroy Nicely, Tekian Allen and Brandon Wallace, the back four in the middle of the park, Jason White, Akeem Saunders and Dustin Cohen, who has made his way across from 
uh, Vera Technical, or Denby High rather. He has three goals to his name so far. Uh, Ricardo Bins, Aurel Miller, and Tajon Cummings are the top three for Glenn Muir. For Gavin Maceo, Garfield Tomlinson is in goal. Tyree McKinley, Ronaldo Hitchman, Malik Robinson, and Devani McIntosh in the back four. Denana Thompson, Rashawn White, Livingston Donaldson, and Omarion O'Brien in the middle of the park. Jahari Williams will play behind their number 10, their striker, Christopher Mundell. And we're on the way here at Glenmuir High. Gav Maceo looking to get proceedings going with a, a long ball, but the Glenmuir back line trying to navigate. Unable to do so well, but uh, nothing doing there in the end. A goal kick to Glenmuir High. There's Andrew Peart, the man in charge of Glenmuir High School. Glenmuir looking to pounce here. Cummings. Cummings still trying to make his way through all comers. Wins it back. Well, no, not quite. Trying to win it back. Well, this game could be physical as well. Glenmuir trying to go into the attacking third further. Gavin Messia goes long. Well, that was always going to be difficult. <laughs> Putting his keeper in some problems there, Tekwe and Allen. And Murray looking absolutely bemused at him. That was such strong service from Allen. As he tried to get his keeper involved. Corner kick to Gav Maceo. What can they serve up? Well, four players inside the box for Gav Maceo. Now make that five. Ball sent inside and it was overcooked. And Allen will see that one go out into touch. Good early press from Garvey Maceo, not allowing Glenmuir to play out from the back. But they have won the second ball in midfield. Kim Saunders. Drawing the foul there. Their captain, new captain for this season, Jason White, taking it quickly. And here comes Saunders again. Well, there's a ball inside. And again, there is a little bit too much on that one. There's Lester Hibbert, the man in charge at Gav Maceo. No Meron Gordon, as uh, he's on leave. Garve Masse are trying to play their stuff as well as they, as they would do. One of the few teams that wouldn't be intimidated by this Glenmuir setup. Here's Garve Masse. defending there by nicely the glimmer defense really backed away there 
but the ball had crossed the line, it seems. It's going to be a goal kick to Glenmuir High. The offside. Garvey Masseo still applying a pretty strong press, but Glenn, you're playing out of this one. Two. The whistle finally goes. Yeah, two fouls there first on Dustin Cohen. Then on Aurel Miller, who was looking to capitalize on that flick on. Yep. Malik Robinson with the initial foul there on Dustin Cohen. Actually was injured in the warm-up. Just before the start of the game and the coaching staff. And more importantly, Malik Robinson himself said that he's ready to go. It's fine. He can go through whatever he picked up in the warm-up. Glenmuir with a chance here and Cohen who's behind it. Has five to aim for as well in front of him. There it is, lofted, the keeper coming out. Tomlinson making a good punch. Connor nicely trying his best to keep that one in, but unsuccessful same for Saunders over there on that far side the right side of the Glenmuir attack there is Malik Robinson heavy strapping on that right knee he'll certainly have his hands full Typically, seeing Glenmuir invert their left fullback. On this occasion, it's new money Blackwood, as it has been over the past couple of seasons. Looking to clear that pathway and overload the midfield as well. He has been an integral cog to first have been Francis winning team in 20. 22 and then a Champions Cup winning team in 2023. Glenmuir looking to upgrade those trophies and they've recruited well to do so. Here's the main recruit, Dustin Cohen. Oh, that's a lovely ball slip through. Here's the deliver inside. Oh, he's missed the target. Oh, it's a massive chance for Tejon Cummings. Lovely floated ball inside the box. Cummings was there, unmarked. Should have put that one away. Yeah, he really should have. That was a really good chance. Arriving late at the back post. And I was speaking of players who really made an impact last season. Tajan Cummings certainly was one of those players. As a matter of fact, Glenmuir have returned 13 players from their squad last season. Uh, at least 13. Many integral players even starting on the bench in this game. Orain Watson, who has been a fixture for the past couple of seasons, represented Jamaica at the national under-17 level on the bench. Naron Allen, who has also represented Jamaica at that level, also on the bench. So a lot of firepower for Glenn Muir. Here's Jason White, I think, with the aging out of Theon QP at Clarendon will probably be undisputed here's an opportunity here for Glenmuir on his left fires that one over the top I think that was Cohen who let fly no it was Bins actually trying to find the top Bins but uh, well off the mark yeah two goals and two assists for Bins 
to start the season. Garvin Maceo also bringing back several players from last season. A relatively successful campaign, seven players returning. Of course, lost someone who can be seen as a Garvin Maceo and maybe even a Da Costa Cup legend in Cleo Clark. Close to 60 goals in the competition. All the goal scoring burden now seemingly falling on the shoulders of Christopher Mondo, who has already hit the target so far this season. Glenmuir and uh, a coming together there inside the box. Referee pointing for a goal kick in the end. Aurel Mina, Miller getting the nod of the aforementioned Lorraine Watson. O'Neill Headley also on the bench for Glenmuir. So, so much quality, not only on the starting lineup, on the bench as well. Fans, of course, as per usual, out in their numbers to watch Glenmuir. Thankfully, the afternoon has cooled a bit. White through the middle. That's another crunching challenge there from Robinson. The referee said that he overdid it. He certainly started in a pretty intense manner. Malik Robinson probably looking to get the adrenaline going. Yeah, he's almost attacking as if he's a wounded animal. You're just on fire today, aren't you, Donald? Aurel Miller already in the wars. Just 11 and a half minutes into this game. And he will be closely watched. Already and six goals into the Costa Cup Miller. Williams sends it in the middle of the park. Lovely service up front, but Glenmuir coming away with the possession. White trying to get a foot in. But good work there by Livingston Donaldson. O'Brien on it. Getting help from Williams. And too much on it from Williams. Goalkeeper Justin Moore is stepping up forming a bit of a makeshift back four at times in possession. Right behind a makeshift double pivot as well of Blackwood and Jason White. So Glenmuir certainly shifting things around. And this is why it creates a lot of space. Miller has collected that one deep and sends it out to his right. White. Sends it out further wide. Not the best first touch, was it? But he's managed to keep it in play. New sends inside the box, and he has dragged that one wide, I think. There was a deflection, it seems, here. Yeah. Might have come off Malik Robinson, who was on the scene as per usual. It was Bins with the effort. It actually wasn't. It's actually McIntosh receiving treatment.
be a future Glenmuir star also watching on. We're hearing the roll of Distant Thunder here at Glenmuir Height. Most times, like clockwork, we do get the rain here at Glenmuir High. We welcome the cool of the afternoon, but not necessarily the rain. Yeah, I don't think the players would necessarily welcome the rain either. Good surface they're playing on. You know, Glenmere, a school that has returned so many players to what was already a formidable team. But one player that they did lose was their captain of last season, Kyle Gordon. So instrumental, especially in the bigger games for them. It was always going to be interesting to see how they would replace him. They had to look externally. Jason White almost sends this one into oblivion. We'll look externally for his replacement position wise but in terms of leadership that has fallen to Jason White at the base of midfield who as you said sent that one very wide substitution actually for Garvey Maceo early Wilton Williams coming on for Ronaldo Hitchman it was actually Hitchman who was receiving the Glenmere calmly playing this one around. Yeah, unfortunate there for Hitchman, the former Veer player. Would have seen his team go down to Kemsil at the curtain raiser here by two goals to nil. And now Veer completing 15 minutes in this game before being substituted. Which is a bit unfortunate. A lot unfortunate, actually. Blackwood. Again, are coming together. The referee telling Miller to get up. Good win by White. He's covered a lot of acres so far. Yes, yeah, had to. Seems as if he's playing as a lone pivot. And Giovanzi did some inter Clarendon travel this summer, moving from Cohen almost pulling out a, a wonderful trick there on the edge of the box. Yellow card is actually shown. Malik Robinson goes into the referee's book. Hard to say. I'm surprised about that one. He has certainly been putting in some tough challenges at the start of this game. Dustin Cohen been, at the, been on the end of a couple of them as well. And he was late and done by a brilliant piece of skill. As you'd expect from Dustin Cohen. Receiving a bit of treatment as well. Dustin Cohen, once the youngest player to ever grace the Jamaica Premier League, did so at the age of 15. Don't quote me on the number of days after his 15th birthday, however. Played five years of football, a stone throw away from here at Denby. And now has made the travel, represented Jamaica at the under 15, under 17, and under 20 level. Opportunity for Glenmuir here to take the lead. What can they manufacture from this set piece? Cohen. 
Cohen is behind this. Here's the delivery inside. Not clear properly. White trying to keep it alive. Cummings couldn't get a foot in. Here's Gavin Maceo now. Trying to get numbers forward. But Glenmuir having enough back. Cummings sends this one to the edge of the box. Hustled and hurried Rashawn White by Jason White. Forced to go backwards and Garvey Maceo build again. Garvey Maceo, they give it up in a dangerous spot. It's a chance here for Glenmuir High. This one is driven and uh, Blocked there by Robinson. Glenmuir still with a chance. Cummings with a lovely touch inside. White sends it out wide. Here's the delivery. It's not a bad one at all, but it's handled well by the Gav Maceo defense. Glenmuir will start again. This is new money Blackwood. Blackwood has some space to run into. Here's a chance for Cummings. His effort is blocked. White trying to set that one through to Bins and uh, there is reprieve for Garvin Maceo they have a free kick yeah well needed reprieve as well Christopher Mondo getting himself in between man and ball there Gav Maceo with a chance here, and here's an effort that's well wide of the mark. Highly ambitious, Livingston Donaldson. Yeah, there's a Andrew Vanzi, as I was mentioning, did some inter Clarendon transfer travel. Switch the colors of Humble Lion going to Chapelton Maroons in the Jamaica Premier League. Supporting the, the youth of Clarendon today. Dustin Cohen rung up for a foul there. Searching ball out wide. McKinley. And White collecting it. Now trying to force it back out wide. Glenmuir with the possession. Lovely ball to the left. Cummings on it. Skips by another challenge. Couldn't quite feed his teammate. They'll start again. Well, that's a... A lunge coming in from Devani McIntosh. Yeah, not the best of challenges there. Blackwood certainly felt it. Oh, you missed the ball totally. Yeah, that's a really poor challenge. Probably a bit lucky to escape without a booking on that occasion. will be Cohen again. It's actually a throw in. There's actually no <laughs> foul given. That's very surprising. Manages to keep it in play and the corner kick awarded to Glenn Muir High. Blackwood. And this one is driven in and is charged down. Cohen with the attempt. Yeah, yeah. 
throw inside. Miller sends it back outside. Here's a floated ball in the area. No issues there for Tomlinson. Another roll of the thunder as Gav Maceo, they move forward. O'Brien couldn't find a teammate. Remember, you can download the Sportsmax app today from the Google Play or the App Store. It's been a pretty good watch, this game. Well, at least from a tactical lens, I've enjoyed it. Jason White, I think we're going to have to get used to, well, not seeing that. Well, government still looking to capitalize. Enough pressure applied there from Akeem Saunders. Jason White. Oh, that's a delightful ball. Oh, the finish has left a lot to be desired from Ricardo Bins. Well, that's, a, that's actually what I was saying that we're going to have to get used to seeing from Jason White. And that was some lovely play from the defensive midfielder. And a really good ball slipped through as well. And Bins, who has been in some good goal scoring, Nick, shanked that one high and wide as well. Another really good opening for Glenmuir. And they really should have put at least one of those away. Yep, at least. Cohen now striding forward. Feeding Cummings. Cummings delivers just over the top. Miscommunication in the middle of the park for Gavin Maceo and Glenn Muir will come away with it. Cohen having time and options. Finding Cummings. Cummings goes on a, a trek here. Gets the ball. Oh, that's a lovely ball inside again. An opportunity for Bins. He gets it this time. He had two bites of the cherry. He came up with the fruit in the end. And after missing a glorious opportunity just a couple minutes before, Bins makes up for it and sends Glenn Muir into the lead. And that's exactly what Glenn Muir would have needed, would have wanted. A couple of chances wasted. But it was only a matter of time before their quality. And don't get it wrong, that goal was of supreme quality, the pass initially from Cummings and Bins. I said he was in good nick. He got the rub of the green there and headed that one home to give Glenmuir the lead here at home. Third goal this season for Ricardo Bins. 
governments here, how can they respond? We are approaching the half hour mark here. The team in red in front. Mm. Cummings. A delightful little run before losing it. Always looking to drift inside on that. Right foot Cummings. Well, <laughs> probably three more remaining then by that prediction. There is Cummings, the nephew of the former national striker Omar Cummings. Miller. Bins. Confidence high. Bins. Glenmuir still has it. Cohen. To the byline. Pulls it back. <laughs> he, did, he didn't know where that was going. I'm sure of it, Miller. Looking for his seventh this season. Yeah, that one was fired at him from Dustin Cohen, who did so well to freeze his defender. Took him down the bar line and another huge chance for Glenn Muir. And Garvey Maceo, despite their best efforts of Really been under a spell at times in Glenmuir's final third. Some real pieces of magic to unlock the door, but only one goal to show for it. Governor talking it over. Give me your support looking pretty confident. Your team ahead. Getting some scores from the Dakota Cup. William Nib leading Holland by two goals to nil. Herbert Morris leading St. James High by a goal to nil. Mannings are leading Godfrey Stewart by a goal to nil. Couldn't quite handle that 
ball from his goalkeeper, Giovanni McIntosh. Glenmer is certainly not shy of involving their goalkeeper in build-up. Presents them with all the opportunity of always having an extra body, a numerical advantage in build-up. Makes it pretty comfortable for them to play out of the press when they're faced with it. Stetson and Lakovia were locked at one apiece before the lightning stopped play. This one sent inside the air, but no support. O'Brien. Miller trying to get more involved didn't quite get the pass just now Mundo. Haven't seen a lot from him in this game so far. Needs to be a little bit more influential. His teammates really need to get involved more. Yeah, not quite getting the service or quality service. Going Garvey Maceo. Miller. Touched inside. Oh, he has acres of space to work with. Cohen. Drills that one into the side netting. Would have been a fantastic goal, Dustin Cohen. I'm sure a lot of people around here know exactly what he brings to a team. It's been hard to ignore over the past couple of years, but I'm sure they adore him even more. And so now, seeing that he's wearing the red of Glenmuir. Yep, did make a name for himself at Denby, piling up the goals, especially in the preliminary round. Yeah, he even scored six in a single game last season in the group stages, but that Denby team not making it out of the first round, as you alluded to. Yeah, I guess he's decided that he, he wants a trophy now. And Glenn Mirror as pretty good a bet as any in schoolboy football, having won trophies in the last two seasons of the competition. Coming so slippery, really is. Lovely football being played by Glenn Muir, trying to place that further into the attacking third. White. Blackwood now. Nice turn. Miller on his left. Miller! He fired 
drive that one home. Oral Miller gets his seventh of the season. And Glenn Muir all over Garvey Mateo by two goals to nil now. That was just a fantastic strike. The confidence of him to take that on his left into the bottom corner. And Glenn Muir, it's certainly been such an impressive performance so far. And one of Clarendon's greatest sons once sang about a ship. And Glenn Muir, it has to be said, they are now the big ships sailing in the Da Costa Cup. And they're out to prove it. Orel Miller is out to prove it. 2-0 to Glenn Muir. The GHS on its way. Early anniversary present maybe for Glenmuir High, six to six years tomorrow. It was always going to be a difficult task for Gavi Maceo coming to the den of Glenmuir High. Yes, yeah, so well supported, but also so well drilled on the pitch and the experience is really telling I think so many of these players are part of the success and then the heartbreak of last season they'll want to put things right they'd learn from both exactly Garvey Maceo in the past couple of seasons. Well, this one is sent inside by Cummings. Another opportunity here comes back to Cummings. He's hit that one wide of the target. Yeah, I think actually rather interest, interestingly, Garvey Maceo going back to around 2016 has had the upper hand over Glenn Muir especially a pre-Andrew Peart Glenmuir team. Glenmuir really coming to the fore in the past couple of seasons. 2022, as I mentioned, when they won the Ben Francis Cup. Really unlucky not to get to the latter stages of the Da Costa Cup. Only conceded more than two goals once in that competition. In the round of 16, against Edwin Allen losing out on goal difference, on goal scored actually. 53 goals, only six conceded across that entire campaign in 17 games, 12 clean sheets. So this Glenmuir team have been knocking for quite some time. They remind me of another team that we read over in England just knocking away, improving year on year. They kind of play like them as well. That's where the, really the comparison comes in, but. Would you, would you be a little bit more specific though? Because there are so many teams in, in red. Glit. Gavmaseo will restart. They'd want to get a goal before the halftime interval. Challenge was so necessary there from Brandon Wallace. 
and again pins <laughs> run out of ideas I suspect Donaldson McIntosh Shallow pass, but Governor Seal unable to capitalize. And this is Cummings with acres of space here. Lovely stuff. White inside. Should have been a better ball, you know. He knows it. Not often you see White on the overlapping run. Yeah, that just goes to show the fluidity which his team has. It was actually Cohen filling in for him in that position as he ventures forward again. Cummings. Cummings. Cummings straight to goalkeeper Garfield Tomlinson. He has looked threatening all first half to John Cummings. White, Rashawn White. Williams. White again. Here, yeah, one of those calls had to go his way. Seems as if Malik Robinson is lining up a long range strike here. Surely he's not thinking of it. He thought of it. He <laughs> didn't miss by much. Yeah, that one was close. Seemed as if Murray had it covered all the way, but if he can hit them like that, it was certainly worth a try. Good technique as well. Hit across the ball. He's certainly been involved, Robinson. Yeah, certainly defensively as well. Also has a yellow card to prove it. White. Trying to go down the middle. Slack pass there from Robinson. White. Sends this one out wide. Wallace's ball inside. The keeper punches it away. Good win by Nicely, but he lost it out in the end. Good coverage from Allen. Blackwood on it. Not a lot of time remaining in this first half, and Glemio may just see through. Cummings. Yeah, that, that's the first half. Dominated by Glenn Muir. Just a couple of goals to show for it. But only one team has really and truly turned up, especially in the attacking third. 
You probably wouldn't tell by the silence around the ground here, but it's the home team Glenmuir firmly in the driver's seat. Goals from Ricardo Bins and Aurel Miller giving them the advantage and it's 2-0 after 45 minutes. The UEFA Champions League returns for yet another season on the home of champions. It's a new look league, of course. AC Milan do battle with Liverpool Tuesday, 2 o'clock, 3 in the Eastern Caribbean. And on Sportsmax Plus, Celtic against Lovan Bratislava on Wednesday, 2 o'clock, 3 ECT. Uh, Sportsmax on Wednesday as well. Paris Saint Germain will battle Girona, 2 o'clock, 3 in the Eastern Caribbean. And then also on Thursday, and yes, you are seeing it right, the UEFA Champions League on Thursday, but Arsenal, they have been used to playing on Thursdays in the past, so it shouldn't be a bother to them. They play away to Atalanta. Also on Thursday, we have a couple of schoolboy football matches, Fatima College against Naparima College. Well, we'll take you to SSFL first on Sportsmax 2, Wednesday, 2.15 p.m. Jamaica time, 3.15 in the Eastern Caribbean, and of course in Trinidad and Tobago. And on Thursday, Pembroke Hall against Ascot, at 12.15 p.m., 1.15 ECT on Sportsmax 2, and then right after that, Jamaica College against Excelsior. We're back, by the way, here at Glenmuir High for the start of the second stanza. Glenmuir leading Garvin Maceo by two goals to nil. And uh, they have been the dominant force in this fixture this afternoon. Ricardo Bins, Aurel Miller on the score sheet for the red team. Yeah, they certainly have been looking imperious so far against very good opposition as well. And we're on the way for the second half, officially. government say, can they come back into this contest? That's the question. They haven't really shown their ambition in this game. There has been a change already. Livingston Donaldson is out. Roger McLaughlin comes on in his stead. Jihari Williams also out. Everell Swaby on. So they have rung the changes. Let's see if it will make a difference. Glenn, you're coming out the same. Mentioned in the first half how much firepower they have on their bench. Last thing that Garvey Massey would like to see likes of Oreen Watson, national under-17 and under-20 representative. So to Nyron Allen, na national under-17 representative. O'Neill Headley there as well. Denzel Watson. Devoni Gordon, all of these players returning from last season. So experience and quality on the bench of Glenmuir. Darvin Massey will do well to get back into this game as quickly as possible. Glenn, we are looking for a third here. Mm -hmm. 
Governments here trying to get out of their own half. Thompson. Standing firm there was Thompson. Rashawn White had picked up the loose ball. Players down for Glenmuir and warrants attention. Yeah, Dustin Cohen seemingly trod on. Yeah, it was the back of his, uh, well, his Achilles. <laughs> Back up now, though. Here's Gavin Maceo. That's a lovely first touch, but the shot needed a little bit more power. challenge I think yeah Blackwood committing that fall I think the yellow card was shown as well There's the delivery inside. The keeper comes for it and spills it. And uh, the clearance made. Very gloomy here at Glenmuir High, by the way. Overcast conditions. There's the ball inside, and that proved to be very awkward for Justin Murray. Cummings trying to switch the play. Couldn't get Brandon Wallace going. Now he goes the other way. Gav Maceo on the prowl. O'Brien on it. Free kick awarded to Gav Maceo in a dangerous position here. Yeah, they've started this second half much brighter than they played for most of the first. And it looks as if it will be Malik Robinson yet again to tee this one up. Already went close in the first half. Lining up to hit this one with a little bit more finesse, it looks like. Well, he has the power in that right foot. Robinson, the keeper holds on at the second attempt before Christopher Mundell could bundle it home. Pretty comfortable, dead center of the goal. Ball over the top again. Governor say looking to capitalize. <laughs> and uh, he did enough, didn't he? No, there was, he actually touched it. 
did Conroy nicely. Yeah, a bit of a muffed clearance. Mm. Garvey Maceo still on the prowl. Would be interesting if they pull a goal back here. Ball sent inside. Sean White making the connection there, but no issues for Justin Murray. This is a lovely ball slipped through. Well, there's a coming together there. Saunders running out of the heart of midfield, colliding with Garfield Tomlinson, the government's air custodian. Nicely, Cummings, lovely, was he pushed? He was, free kick, Glenmuir. He is a slippery player. Yeah, not many defenders in schoolboy football can stick with him. Needs a bit of assistance as well. Evaded him once, but... Couldn't get away from McIntosh on the second occasion. Free kick to Glenmuir High here. Coin behind this. Wasn't the best delivery. And uh, Gavin Maceo going through the gears. Garvey Maceo certainly playing at a higher tempo than they did in the first half. Blackwood taking no chances.
Gav Masio still looking to get a goal back here. O'Brien trying to win it on the byline. And the corner kick has been awarded. Blackwood isn't too happy about it. Here's a corner kick. Ends up being a goal kick. Yeah, some miscommunication there too. Garvey Maceo players going for that one. Glenmuir really, not yet really in the pace of things, so they've made a change. Rain Watson coming on for Tajan Cummings. Looks as if Orin Watson will go through the middle. Naren Allen also on for Ricardo Bins. So both goal scorers, no, not both goal scorers, one of the goal scorers off. Good interception there by Gavin Maceo. Glenmuir, the, though they have it back. Seems if Miller is now going to be playing behind Orain Watson. Marin Allen. Mm -hmm. Really not what Garvey Massey would have wanted to see too national representatives coming off of the bench. Remember to download the Sportsmax app today from the Google Play or the App Store. Keep in touch with all things happening on the Sportsmax app. He was very late. Yeah, that challenge came in by mail. And McLaughlin goes into the referee's book. Watson. Ball sent inside the area. Saunders. Here's a shot at the top of the box. Not a lot of power behind it from Cohen. Eventually ended in the hands of Goalkeeper Garfield Tomlinson.
Ball played through. Arane Watson inside the area. Earl Miller didn't gamble on that one. Could have had a tap in at the back post. Corner kick has been awarded to Glenn Muir. So it was a deflection on that shot from Watson. They take it short. Ball played inside and no issues there for Tomlinson. Goes immediately upfield but too much on it. White dictating the tempo. Cohen. Nice cul de sac created by him. Couldn't supply the pass though. Wins it back. McKinley, or rather Wallace. Flag stays down here. The service should have been much better. Yeah, extremely heavy by Orel Miller. Game looking increasingly more stretched as time wears on. They haven't looked inspired this afternoon, Gavin Maceo. Special in the attacking third. Sometimes it is difficult to draw the line between the endeavor of uh, Gavin Maceo or the professionalism of Glenn Muir in this fixture. They've had the opportunities though, Gavin Maceo. Just haven't been frequent. He wants the standards to remain high, Andrew Peart. Right now it feels as if the game is just meandering along. Can they bring the crowd to life once more? Saunders slips it out wide to Wallace. Wallace pulls it across. Tomlinson with the boot in. Sometimes that's necessary. One thing that Gavin Maceo, I suppose, will be grateful for is that the home crowd isn't necessarily playing the part of 12th man in this one. They've just been mostly quiet. A crowd that's very much used to the highest of standards and trophies. Yeah, you're very right. They haven't played too much of a factor in this game so far. Here's White. Was he pulled back here? Yellow card is going to be shown. Another one of those ranger runs through midfield for 
Jason White. Free kick from a considerable distance for Glenn Muir. Cohen behind it. They just confirmed that Delana Thompson has gone into the referee's book. And now Tomlinson requires some attention. Is there anything that we can read from this performance from Gavin Masil, first of all? I wouldn't say so much this early into the season. I think that Gavin Masil, at least on a physical level, have competed pretty well, but especially in their attacking patterns of play, haven't looked up to scratch. But even if we were to look as far back as last season, they weren't necessarily a extremely potent attacking team when they came up against the bigger teams so this might just be their way maybe they just need a little bit more threat on the transition and Glenmuir a team that is a bad matchup for them because they match up so well on the defensive transition and Glenmuir have been relatively good on the day so I wouldn't look into this result too much pretty much playing out to how I would have expected it. <laughs> Government still making a couple of changes here. With the Johnny Johnson and Rakesh Jones coming in. Blackwood on it. Poked forward. That's a lovely turn from Miller. Change of ball is required. White helping out at the back. Actually, a corner was given mm. for that one. There's the ball inside at the near post. Lemieux handled it. Over 
or cooked for Allen. And on the part of Glenmuir High, they really haven't been pushed to their limits. We've seen glimpses of what they can do. Evening opportunities that they haven't converted as we see them continue to ring the changes here. O'Neill Headley coming on, a staple last season. That left centre back role, one of the very best in all of schoolboy football, really. Change in midfield as well. Saunders making his way off. For Denzel Watson. Not a bad shuffling of the pack there for Glenmuir High. I suppose a number of their players can get adequate rest during the season. Especially against opposition many would deem to be comfortable. Again, was he brought down inside the box, the referee? points for a goal kick Cohen can't believe it can you I would have to see it again but it did look like mm. there was contact or at the very least we can say he stepped across them across him maybe Cohen made the most of it Demure outnumbering Garvin Maceo. This ball played forward. Was he brought down? <laughs> Referee tells Orain Watson to get up. There's the ball inside that's headed away by Conroy nicely. Corner kick coming up for Gavin Maceo. Clockland's ball inside. <laughs> I think he knew exactly what he was doing there. Yeah, Denzel Watson, I guess he can say getting in the way. That's going to be another free kick. For Malik Robinson to tee up. Yeah, he's been lining up these long-range missiles all afternoon. They haven't gone too far off target, to be fair to him. And here's another opportunity for him to flex his muscles, so to speak, from way out. Straight into the wall.
Glenmuir looking to capitalize. And that's a foul. It's actually Robinson that's down. Did have an injury in the, or an injury concern in the warm up to this game. He had a lot more strapping on his knee though. A lot of it has been taken off. So I'm not sure if that's a sign of uh, improvement. Well, it's now time for the Sports Max Hat moment of the game. And it's Miller's finish. His seventh goal of the campaign, Oral Miller. Driving hit across Garfield Tomlinson, who really had no chance. What a good finish that is. And that is the Sports Max App moment of the game. Courtesy, of course, of the Sports Max App. One of the candidates, of course, for a player of the game, but who knows in which direction that may head into. I mean, I certainly don't. Lofted effort. That could have been problematic. Seems that the game is petering out to it, an inevitable end, which is expected to favor Gledmuir High with this advantage. Yeah, it hasn't been the same intensity in the second half, at least from the Glenmuir side. Certainly not quality as well. Yeah, I think that one sums it up mm. from Maureen Watson. Opportunity here for Glenmuir, trying to make it three, but again out, out of the reach of Oren Watson. Can't say that they've been thoroughly entertained, the spectators. But the majority of them in support of 
Glenmuir High would be relatively pleased with the outcome. Monal is being taken off. Yep, and his afternoon has ended. Mundell, Lex J. Green, comes on. That was strong. Yellow card shown to Denzel Watson who's been, let's just say, mischievous since he's been on the park. Yeah, he's certainly been amongst it, and this was a tough Justin Coyne taking his leave. What did you make of his performance today? Industrious as always, with hints of magic sprinkled here and there, but not his best. Certainly has more in store, I would assume, as the competition carries on. Yeah, Ronaldo Campbell came on to replace him. Denmuir. There was a trip there. Free kick to, to Glenmuir just outside the area. O'Neill Headley is behind this one. This one is driven inside and no worries there for Tomlinson. Corner kick awarded to Glenmuir. Denzel Watson on it. Nicely. Nicely.
did beat the offside trap on that occasion. But really and truly, we haven't really seen a lot from Gavin Massey in the attacking third. He looks a little bit frustrated though, Andrew Peart. You're always a perfectionist. This ball sent inside the box and Justin Murray collects. Second half has been relatively quiet for him. The Glenmuir custodian. He had a couple of spills at the start, but Gary Masseo haven't threatened too much throughout the game, really. Four minutes added on. Not sure exactly what was going to his mind there. I think that was Rakesh Jones. Or Rakesh Jones, I should say. One more change being made by Glenn Muir. Aurel Miller, the goal scorer, is making his way off. And there's Deshaun Campbell on to replace him. Just two minutes to go in stoppage time. Jamie, you're looking to add another topping on this cake. Allen. Jason White. White again.
Just seconds remaining in this one. And the game ending just as how it has been for majority. Glenn Muir in control. Opportunity here for Glenn Muir and well, they just have been unable to get the third goal. Well, they do walk away with all the points. It was a, a victory with some ease for Glenmuir High. Andrew Pierre will be pleased with the results and maybe some aspects of the performance as well. The coaches greet each other. Lester Hibbert joining Andrew Pierre in embrace. Gov Masia knows that uh, it's a long season ahead of them and they would want to improve but they did face quite a force this afternoon in Glenmuir High in their backyard final score Glenmuir 2 Garvin Maceo 0 As we take a look at the full-time highlights, Glenn Muir with the opportunity there at the back post, trying to convert. That looked to have been Cummings reaching for it. And then that effort sent across the face of goal by deflection. This was a lovely through ball, you know. Really was from White and Bins. Could have done better with that one, Ricardo Bins. It was all Glenn Muir. Bins, though, made up for the earlier miss and scored a wonderful goal. Lovely first take. And then the header across the line. Getting his third goal of the campaign, Ricardo Bins. And he enjoyed that one. Cohen did some good work, almost set it on a, a platter for his striker, Aurel Miller. Miller would eventually get on the score sheet with a fabulous finish. Lovely stuff from Glenn Muir's number 17, getting his seventh of the campaign right into the far triangle. And Glenmuir were well on their way. This effort from distance, Malik Robinson showcasing his range, didn't miss by much. Again, he was on set piece duty. Mundle couldn't quite reach that one in time for the follow up, and that was that for this game. Lemieux with 20 attempts, but just five of them were on target. Gavin Maceo with 10 attempts, two of which were on target. 23 fouls committed in the game. Five yellow cards were shown. One more shown to Gavin Maceo. And in the end, Lemieux with the majority of the possession at 
I'm joined now by what a man of the match, none other than Aurel Miller of Glenmuir High. Aurel, what was going through your mind for that goal? It was very simple, you know, just be in the right position at the right moment, turn and fire. So, yeah. Do you have a goal tally in mind to get to this season? Yes, 35. 35 goals is yes. a lot of goals. Yes, I, I'm working towards it. All right, Aurel, looking forward to what you do next. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that was goal scoring hitman Aurel Miller of Glenmuir High. I'm going to be speaking to coach Lester Hibbert now of Garvey Maceo. Tough game against a tough opponent, coach. Speak yes. to me about the game. Uh, you know, it was just a game of two halves. You know, um, Glenmuir got two goals in the first half. And when you look at the game in the second half, it was a totally different game in the second half because, um, you know, the boys came up back in the second half. They stick to the simple instructions and, you know, that was just the difference in the game today. What were those instructions to the boys in that second half? No, just to stay with the players because you're seeing that Glenmore was doing a lot of movements within the first half. But when we started out the game, we were keeping them behind the ball and they were passing the ball side to side. But at the end of the day, we just lose the discipline and we conceded two goals and that, that was what just cost us in the game today. What's the message to the boys after a game like that? No, we just have to brush off and come again. We have a next game coming Wednesday, so we have to just refocus, go to the training ground and prepare and go for the three points again. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Yeah, that was Coach Hibbert of the Garvey Maceo. And now it's over to Coach Andrew Peart of Glenmuir, the winning coach for the day. There's a maturity about the way your boys handled business today. Are you pleased with the victory? Yeah, and as you mentioned, the maturity. Um, for most of them, it's been three years. So as they get older, you expect more of them. And I thought I showed that uh, the key thing for us today was not to get the game stretched. So it's about connecting the passes and moving the team gradually up the field. And I thought we did that well first half. Second half started a little bit where they got the ascendancy in playing the direct balls. And then our team got, became stretched. So we quickly tried to control that and then move the game forward from there. I saw Oren Watson and Naron Allen coming on in that second half and I thought to myself, what in the Manchester City is this? Two under-17 representatives coming off the bench. How important is depth in you possibly winning more silverware? It's important and it's also credit to the players who are playing currently over them. Um, so it's about creating competition. Yes, you have competition from the other schools they can play, but inside our team you need competition to get the best out of everybody and that's important. The Ben Francis Cup two years ago, the Champions Cup last year, the CONCACAF Under-14 Championship in the summer. Mm -hmm. Coach, you know I'm going to ask you, is this the year you're going to win the big one? Which is the big one? The Da Costa it's, Cup. It, it's, it's step by step. That's our ambition, of course. Um, but it's, it's game by game. The focus for us now is coming out of the group. Then we take it the rounds after that. So we're not thinking long term. Yes, you plan long term, but we we'll work in short term and it's day by day. Thank you, coach. All the best. All right, cool. So let's recap. Veer Technical going down 2 0 to Kemp's Hill earlier today. Fogger Road with a 6 0 win over Porus. Glenmuir 2 0 over Garvey Maceo. So here's the standings. Glenmuir, the have a perfect three from three now. Vogaro, they have a couple of wins from their three matches. They are on seven points and still unbeaten. Those two teams, the only unbeaten teams in the group. Gavin Maceo in third spot, a point behind on six. The same amount of points as Kempsel in fourth position. Veer Technical, Old Harbour, Winston Jones and Porus round out the rest of the teams in zone I. But yeah, it's going to be a, a keenly contested zone. SSFL coverage on Sportsmax 2 continues on Wednesday afternoon, 2.15 p.m. Jamaica time, 3.15 in the Eastern Caribbean, Fatima College against Naparima College. And on Thursday afternoon, Pembroke Hall up against Ascot, 12.15 p.m., 1.15 in the Eastern Caribbean. Then right after that, Jamaica College and Excelsior will do battle, 3.30 p.m. Jamaica time, 4.30 in the Eastern Caribbean. Remember those matches on Sportsmax 2 and every match can be seen on the Sportsmax app as well. That's it for our coverage here. Uh, just to remind you that Glenmuir with a 2 0 win. It was convincing over Gavin Maceo. And uh, they have really showed their mettle in this one. Definitely one of the favorites to look forward to. 
them competing and possibly going all the way. Let's see in this Da Costa Cup competition. On behalf of my producer, Phil Riley, and director, Michael Edwards, I'm Donald Oliver, signing out for the final time from Glenmuir High. Yo, Issa. Oh, it's cool, boy, football, look this season. People them ready, you know. All right, then, he go, man, he go. Only for your shield, you make me link up. We watch the champions cup, then run to water cup with team, I win the championship this season. Yo, it's a pop and dive a school, I got finish the league and beat now. With you, I got collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. Yo, it's a busy fans are roll out all boat, be a flank for a vehicle. Looking at the crowd, but slow, the supporters from school and community. People not finna understand some of the super real They some of what you on TV too Country and town you know if they want reason He's a school boy football Good cup, look one, look all Which team are the best on a go better than the best on the fire team beat your chest He's a school boy football A team could rise and a team could fall But they never will know until the whistle blows So run, come enjoy the show Yo, he's a Competition and never have a nice up. People love see when more I get nice up on the team. I'm gonna score some.